A warm welcome to part two of my series in which I will be examining the intuition and deduction thesis and explaining it for philosophy A-level. In this video we'll be breaking down all of the criticisms that the exam board expect you to know so you're prepared for the exams. Now criticisms on my mind map are in green. You can see that off of basically every argument there are at least one criticism. Although Descartes' uh, attempt to outline and complete modern philosophy uh, was very interesting, it maybe wasn't very good and he sent out copies of the meditations before he published them and they got criticised a lot and they have continued to get criticised a lot. Now, let's begin with criticisms of the Cogito. So the Cogito is really quite a bit good, really good bit of philosophy, really cool, and isn't perfect, but, you know, it's, it's a strong bit of philosophy. We can still, and we are going to, criticise it. Now, criticising Cogito is a really intelligent thing to do for A-level philosophy. And the reason is, in your essays... Let's say you get a question on, is Descartes' intuition and deduction thesis successful in proving the, the existence of the external world? That could be a question that you'd, you'd get. 25 marks, you need to evaluate different positions, different theories, different arguments. Maybe in the first few paragraphs you talk about uh, the arguments for the external world. Maybe you knock that down and you go back and you knock down the arguments from God. And then finally you knock down the arguments from Cogito. The reason that's a good idea is because you show each working part doesn't work. And finally, you smash down Quadsto and there's nothing. If he can't even escape his waves of doubt, and he can't even prove that the self exists, then everything else is bound to fail. So it's a very strong line of attack that you could take. These are two premises, uh, sorry, these are two criticisms that I really like. We'll first look at the hidden premises argument, and that's from Bertrand Russell. So Russell argues that the cogito contains two separate premises. One, there is a thought going on. When you think of cogito, there is a thought going on. True, fine. But the second premise is that these thoughts are attached to something called me, to the self. And the first can be proved, but the second isn't logically necessary. And that's a really strong argument, for me at least. I find that very convincing. The, the first part of Cogito we can accept. Yeah, okay, I'm doubting. I'm thinking. There's a thought going on. Okay, I'll accept that. But maybe what I won't accept, and what doesn't follow necessarily, is that something called me is attached and this is similar to Hume's idea of the uh, bundle of self. There is one unified thing that's me. I'm just the continuation and the experience of these thoughts that I'm not even in control of anyway. And then the second way we can attack Cogito, not the only way, of course, there are many different ways. And if you're watching this video, you're probably pretty motivated to get good marks in philosophy. And so... I recommend you do your own reading. Um, for me, one of the biggest game changers in getting the top marks, you know, getting 23 uh, out of 25 in the exams themselves, one of the biggest game changers was reading proper philosophy texts, not just the textbooks, but going above and beyond. And so the second criticism that I really like is from Blackburn. And he argues that the Cogito is curiously temporary and can only ever prove the Cogito at the very moment that he is thinking. So when I'm thinking, I think therefore I exist. Cogito ergo sum. When I'm thinking that, yeah, fine. I can verify that I'm existing. But as soon as that thought is gone, I'm left nowhere. I'm still left in this place of doubt. And so Descartes can't escape 
his waves of doubt. He can't prove that the self exists forever or, you know, for the for his continued existence. He can only prove it in the moment when he's having the intuition, the thought that I doubt, therefore, I think, I think, therefore, I exist. Uh, and Descartes responds, uh, as I said, he sent out uh, this, that he sent out the meditations, he he wrote back to lots of the responses, and um, Descartes responds that a thought requires a thinker. So, a thought requires a thinker. So I have a thought, and it's reasonable to assume that there is a thinker, there's a person, there's an actual being. It's not just a thought machine. We're not just existing in one moment and then nothing and then randomly in another moment. We can reasonably assume that there's this continued existence. But is that really in line with his foundationalist a priori approach? I'm not so sure. Next, we move on to proving the existence of God. Let's start with the trademark argument. Now, the trademark argument is bad. Um, it, it doesn't really work. And it relies on a few principles that are just rubbish. Philosophy Tube describes them as bollocks, and I think that's quite suiting. So there's this idea called the levels of reality principle and the causal adjacency principle. Both of these are, are bad. Um, the levels of reality theory is that some things are more real than other things. So we have the properties of objects, we have finite substance, and then we have infinite substance. And we're finite substance, and that is the reason why we can't conceive ourselves of God, which is infinite substance. Because God is more real than, possesses more reality than us as finite substance. But that's just palpably absurd. I mean, that isn't, that's just bollocks, right? Um, and it isn't very good because either a thing exists or, or it doesn't. It's a sort of a zero or, or one. Things aren't more real. Okay, it's this binary thing existence. It's not... A bit real, more real, even more real. What does that even mean? Okay, that's just totally meaningless. And so that's one reason why the trademark argument doesn't work. The other reason is the idea of causal adjacency. And this is that like cause have like effects. Now we know this isn't true. A cake, for example, the component parts that make up a cake have different properties to the cake itself. And so again, we can show that causal adjacency is wrong. Like cause don't have to have like effects because uh, cake doesn't helium uh, atoms, or, or not atoms, helium particles, my science is not very good, helium particles um, have different properties to the things that they cause. So cogito can be shown not to work. The trademark argument can be shown not to work. The ontological arguments or argument also doesn't work. Kant really swiftly shows the ontolo ontological argument from Descartes doesn't work. Literally in one line. I mean, that's how good this criticism is. Kant says existence is not a predicate. Existence is not a property of a thing. Uh, you can't say that I have five coins and they're gold and they're, they weigh X amount and they're shiny. One of them is a bit rusty. They've got the queen's face on them and also they exist. But it's not a property in the same way that the shininess is or the weight or the design or the fact that one of them is chipped and a bit rusty. The reason is existence has no knowledge to the thing. Saying Sam has glasses and he has messy hair that he needs to get cut and he's wearing a black t-shirt and also he exists, you learn nothing about me. If I just say that Sam exists, you still know nothing about what I actually am. And so existence is not a predicate. 
Descartes treats perfection, uh, sorry, Descartes treats existence like a predicate, and it, it isn't, so the argument doesn't work. Now, the arguments from imagination and the arguments from involuntary experiences can also just as swiftly be attacked and shown that they don't work. In essays, the challenge for Descartes' arguments is not finding criticisms, it's not writing about criticisms, it's about being selective with the criticisms that you use and how you use them. I was always confused when my teacher would say, don't go in with Hume's fork straight away in your essay. And now having got the top marks, um, I understand that. If you go in with a criticism like Hume's fork it immediately, then you show quickly that the whole thing collapses, the whole pursuit of Descartes collapses. But the problem with doing that is it means you've got nothing to talk about and everything else is just redundant. So you need to build yourself up to a criticism like, like Hume's fork. Now, Hume's fork divides knowledge into two different categories, analytic and synthetic, okay? a priori and a posteriori, claims about the world and claims that are a priori known prior to experience of the world. And so we have matters of fact and we have relations of ideas. Matters of fact are facts. Facts must be about the world. So that's how I remember that. Matters of fact, facts must be about the world. Relations of ideas, well, ideas are all in the mind. And so I was initially confused by that distinction, but you need not be. That's how I think about it. What Hume shows is, and you, you know, there are a list of technical terms. You can just be incredibly technical with the language that you use here. Relations of ideas, ideas can never prove anything in the world. And so trying to use a priori things, things that aren't about experience, facts, oh, sorry, not facts, uh, claims, propositions that aren't about the world, that are logically true, are incredibly unhelpful at proving things about the world. And so we shouldn't use them and we can't use them because they're literally talking about two different things. The two completely different things. It's like trying to use geometry, trying to say that a triangle, all the angles in a triangle add up to this amount and therefore God exists. Well, hold on, that's a complete mistake. You know, that they're just completely different. And so synthetic a priori fails. And what Descartes tries to do is synthetic a priori. He reasons about the world from reason alone. And that's wrong. You can only reason about the world with experience and language of the world. And that's why, ultimately, in my opinion, Descartes' intuition and deduction thesis fails. But in the same way that I've explained this video, you shouldn't talk about that at the beginning, because otherwise everything else before it, or everything else after it, is redundant. You need to tease out different points in the arguments to give yourself enough to talk about, to show your technical understanding, to show your technique, and then you can crush everything with Hume's fork. Thank you very much for watching. If this has been helpful, please share it with your classmates on a group chat, for example. Please give this video a like and subscribe if you would like more videos breaking down A-level philosophy 